Hey, greetings classmates. This is Kane Claxton. I am talking to you tonight from Fort Leavenworth, Kansas and the confines of my basement. Uh, so I thank you for your time tonight. We're going to talk about combat flip-flops. Combat flip-flops started as the brainchild of former Army Ranger Matthew Griffin um, after spending two tours in Afghanistan uh, back in the early 2000s. Uh, he later went back in uh, 2011 as a Department of Army civilian or a contractor, I believe, and uh, and then he was kind of finally had the aha moment. He could take products made in Afghanistan by Afghans, bring them back to the states, sell them, and then invest those profits back into Afghanistan through funding things like girls' education and other opportunities. After launching Combat Flip Flops in 2013 with the help of Donald Lee. Uh, combat Flip Flops CEO Matthew Griffin had the opportunity to share Combat Flip Flops and sell it to the sharks on ABC's Shark Tank. Let's go ahead and watch this clip. Hello sharks, my name is Matt Griffin. Please call me Griff. I'm Donald Lee. Call me Lee. We're Combat Flip Flops and we're seeking $150,000 for 10% of our company. Sharks, we're here today to enlist you and the unarmed forces. What we do is simple. We make cool products in dangerous places. In our past lives, Griff and I were Army Rangers. Our motto states, Rangers lead the way. Hoorah! Our mission is to create badass products by skilled entrepreneurs surviving in areas of conflict. This mission provides peaceful, sustainable change in areas that need hope. Our footwear is made in Bogota, Colombia. We support craftsmen, not cartels. Our belts, sarongs, scarves, and cashmere are made in Afghanistan. We employ women and put little girls in school. We partner with a demining organization, Elao, to make a line of jewelry out of landmines. Sharks, right now you're probably thinking, we're crazy. And you're right. <laughs> but somebody probably said the same thing to you once, and it didn't stop you. We know that businesses are more powerful than bullets. So sharks, enlist in the unarmed forces today. Immediately following uh, the appearance on Shark Tank, Combat Flip Flops uh, had like almost a 400,000% uh, increase in traffic to a site and sales. Things were going really good, really well for, for Griffin and crew, but they had some mega challenges um, ahead of them, and namely those were logistical challenges, the problem of getting the, the, uh, the wares from Afghanistan and getting those back into the states in time to fill orders. So a good situation, but really bad in terms of trying to establish credibility and trust with, uh, with a customer base. We'll take a little bit of time to talk about what Combat Flip Flops did to, to advertise, um, and really it wasn't much. Uh, with the exception of the opportunity they had on Shark Tank, uh, Griffin and company really just relied on uh, on the internet, primarily social media, uh, word of mouth, uh, using um, kind of executive engagements, um, social media engagement, as well as um, a little bit of trade shows. Looking at strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, a, a bit of a situational analysis, we can see that the, the main strengths of combat flip-flops are their mission and vision. I mean, it's, it's important. People want to get behind it. Um, they're also very committed to their customer service and transparency um, along the way as they've had trouble uh, delivering orders on time and we're talking like really like a lot of trouble delivering orders on time. Griffin and his company have been uh, absolutely in the front, forefront um, uh, explaining um, each like almost daily why, why things are going, uh, just kind of really investing their customers almost as if they were partners in their, in their business. Um, and then, of course, it's a veteran-owned business, um, which gives it lots of uh, benefits and some, um, some help from other interested corporations and investors. Looking at weaknesses, um, really the Sharks kind of nailed it in their assessment if you watch it all the way through. Uh, they have too many products. Uh, they, they're, they're just too diversified. Another weakness that I just wanted to lay out is uh, the, it's hard to, to evidence that, that what you're buying is making the impacts. I mean, they, they use the words, they say one, uh, one sandal bot uh, affords an entire uh, day of school for a girl in Afghanistan. Um, but it's, it's hard to demonstrate that or show it, and they really don't make any effort to. So I would suggest that that's a weakness. Uh, later we'll talk about it as an opportunity. Like I said, it's really an opportunity for them to to uh, go out and 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 justify or validate that they're 
that what we buy uh, from them is actually making an impact. That is a great opportunity for testimonials from first person accounts there in Afghanistan. Um, and those, those uh, testimonials would go a long way to generate, I think, new business um, and spreading word of mouth. I think that those stories um, tend to all automatically have a viral nature to them and, uh, and they could really um, uh, spiral upward their, uh, their marketing effect. Um, another th opportunity that they could look to do is to increase market segmentation with um, and align it with their communication strategy. I think that they kind of just have a one one size fits all approach and haven't really diversified their their uh, their market as, as significantly as much as they've or their audience near as much as they have uh, diversified their products um, available. Looking at threats, I think their their biggest threat is that customer w w would grow disinterested over time. Um, they they really kind of have a moral model, and uh, and so if your morals don't align with it, then why spend fifty to seventy dollars for a flip flop or fifty dollars for a for a bracelet? Um, also, they have other competitors um, out there that sell flip flops for like a tenth of the cost that look almost exactly the same. The, the real threat is just the uh, customs laws um, that preclude uh, that precludes combat flip flops from from really investing in manufacturing um, in these places so that they can get ahead of the orders and that uh, and that customers can receive their orders, their supplies on time. You know, in conclusion, Combat, Combat Flip Flops maintains a strong position as a virtue-based company. Um, it has a devoted and influential investors that guide Griffin and his crew uh, through marketing, manufacturing, and distribu distributing. It's a veteran-owned business that succeeds in military-friendly communities and large, with especially with large veteran populations. Problems in its supply chain have critical have a critical impact on their ability to grow and threaten their credibility with their customers. But it's engaging CEO Matthew Griffin has the energy and he's got the influence to overcome these challenges. He does need to concentrate his efforts into fewer products and uh, and improve his marketing strategy uh, with better promotion and placement. Hey guys, thanks very much for uh, for coming down to my basement with me.